are good at what they do, that they have referrals. Uh, usually these uh, vendors do come referred by an agent that says, hey, you know, this is my alarm system guy. He's really good. I'd love to get him in our network. So that's the easiest way. So I don't really have to vet them because, you know, if, if Nancy tells me that this guy's great, I'm going to trust her. Um, so once they do join the program, they get this whole slew of benefits. And, you know, the number one thing is just that they have access to our agents. So when they go into our offices and they want to drop off materials, the office manager says, oh, you're in our program. Great. Let's display your stuff right here. If they're not in the program, we don't display the items. Um, and so we do all kinds of social media promotions for them on the private Facebook page, which some of you might have started to see. We invite them to our meetings and our events. So we invite them to log on to these training webinars. So Richie's been really great. A couple of them have logged on in the past couple of weeks and just taken five minutes to tell you about what they do in case you're looking for someone that does that. Um, and we put them in directories and we send out email campaigns. So you're going to hear a lot more about them because I know that the sales managers of the offices are going to really start trying to work with these vendors more in this coming year. And as well, we're trying to put together regional moving guides and that's where you guys come in. Um, you know, North Shore or Maine or Rhode Island, you know, if you close on a house, you get a digital moving guide from Century 21. Thank you so much for closing on a house with us. Here's a, you know, PDF of some vendors we recommend, and that could be landscapers and irrigation companies, um, moving companies. And so, you know, for me, that's a really broad range of areas. So to try to build the moving guide, it would be helpful if anyone has any recommendations it's me for people that could be great for our moving guide I'd love to hear from you um, and that's kind of it I was gonna try to share my screen Richie so they had my contact information okay do you have that oh uh, no I have it right here but when I try to share it won't let me share I uh, won't let you share it that's okay um, do you want to send it to me and I'll put your contact information yeah. in or yeah that would be great and like everyone else it's first and it's your last name so it's C Bellany at c21ne.com. Uh, that's B E L L A N Y. So, right now, because the moving guide is really new, we're really not charging much of anything for brand new vendors to be in it. So, if you have someone in your region that you think would be great, I'd love to reach out to them and offer them the opportunity to be in our moving guide. And then, anytime you want to see the vendors that are currently in our program, it's right on our website. And you'll start to see emails come through from me that say like vendor spotlight. And that would be just a little bit about one of our vendors. And maybe that vendor isn't in your region or maybe you can't use them. But if there is someone, I'd love for you to, you know, consider working with them so that we can create this kind of a partnership. Okay. Thanks guys. Great. Thanks so much, Christy. I really appreciate it. Um, so we, it, like uh, Christy was saying, guys, we, you know, uh, last week we had, um, someone from um, com uh, community, um, I think it was a commercial investor yeah. that actually came on. They did a commercial investments. And um, like I said, every every time we sign on and there is, um, um, you know, we do have a vendor uh, that, is, that is slotted in. They will talk to us for a few minutes and everything. It's always good to establish your networking contacts. So. Um, you know, always great to take advantage of it. If you have any questions, again, you can, um, you know, you can get in touch with uh, Christy and she'll, um, you know, she'll walk you through that whole process. But again, Richie, I'll, I'm going to sign off. Have a great night, guys. Okay, Christy. Thank you so Bye. much. Thank you. I appreciate it. So uh, with that in mind, welcome, everybody. Um, I want to welcome you to another segment of, um, of the sales training uh, tonight. We're actually going to go through uh, building a successful foundation, uh, which is part of the Create, Create 21 routine. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mute a couple of these right now because I am getting some background noise. But if you do have um, if you do have any questions at all, please feel free to yell them out uh, during this um, segment. Um, this. Uh, Create 21 segment uh, involves, and I'm going to go through the sessions with you, it's uh, designed to help you leverage the power of our brand in uh, building your business. Uh, listen and understand the essential skills 
and traits of a successful real estate sales associate. It's going to recognize the difference between active and passive prospecting. It's also going to implement the best practices of goal setting in order to achieve uh, exceptional results. And it's got to begin uh, to build a customized plan for your own success in real estate. So one of the things I want to go over with you is um, it's a Century 21 brand. Um, you know, those of you who came over and you really don't know too much about Century 21, I'm going to kind of give you a, a brief history of actually uh, how it started. Um, these numbers, uh, these numbers are actually, um, you know, the, the, the numbers are a little bit smaller than what it is today because of the fact that Century 21 is growing in leaps and bounds right now, especially the corporate Century 21 all over the world. But if you look at the screen, which you can see in front of you right now, it started out in 1971, uh, Century 21. They were the first uh, Century 21 office. Uh, it ended up opening up in California. Okay. Um, I don't know if you remember, you know, and those of you who go back many, many years um, that were either buying real estate or were selling real estate, Century 21 had a trademark. And um, I don't know if you can remember what it is. How would you uh, distinguish between a Century 21 agent and a Remax agent out there? Does anybody have any idea what they, you know, how how you could distinguish between the two? No. Okay. Good. You don't have to answer because I'll answer that for you. Up. Um, oh, that's right. You guys are all muted right now. So um, Nancy Nancy responds back yellow. Well, that's that's. Partially right, Nancy. And uh, I'm going to take you guys off uh, the mute right now. All right. But you are, you are all pretty much uh, partially right with the, um, with, the, with the yellow. Century 21 had the gold, the gold standard. All right. And what they did many, many years ago, okay. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of mute you again because I'm still getting that background noise, right? What they did years ago is they wore the gold jackets. I don't know if you remember, but I went to a convention in 1999 when I joined this company. It was the latter half of 1999. The convention was in San Diego, California, where people started to get awards going up on stage. And, and I remember, you know, a lot of the Californians down there, all right, when they received their awards and they had teams, they had the gold jackets on. And that was their trademark, the gold jackets. And... Um, you know, as a matter of fact, after the convention out in, out in the lobby, they had kiosks and they were selling these gold jackets uh, to many uh, people who joined Century 21. So that was their biggest trademark going back many, many years ago. And the, and the gold, you know, we still have the gold colors today, which, um, which is, is what distinguishes, distinguishes us from the rest of the industry out there. In 1974, they, uh, the first uh, Century 21 International office, it opened up in Canada. Then they actually expanded to two different countries, and they, they went to Japan in 1983. They started really picking up speed, five countries. And then in 1989, all right, they expanded to 10 countries, and they expanded to Mexico. And basically in, 19, in 1998, they went to China. They were now in 20 countries. And then 2002... They were actually went from 20 to 40 countries. They expanded to the Asia Pacific. And in 2006, uh, they went to Russia. So these are statistics for 2016, but the numbers are pretty staggering right now. Um, the numbers are over 6,900 offices uh, of Century 21s out there, 100,000 sales associates, if not more, 78 countries and territories. So what does that mean for us? It means that we can, anybody who's moving anywhere, Okay, whether it's out of the country, out of the state, um, we can refer them to a Century 21 office and pick up a referral fee uh, just by having them fill out some relocation forms. So you never want to turn anybody away, you know, especially when they're moving outside of the area, because we have offices everywhere and in every country. So here's our, here's our brand name, if you can see the screen out there, uh, up there right now. Okay, we're the, we're the leader in brand awareness, which means when people think of Century 21, I mean, when people think of real estate, you know, 93% uh, of them 
You know, uh, I think of uh, going with a Century 21 agent or going with the company Century 21. Remax is a little bit behind us, and you got the big boys of Caldwell Banker, Prudential, Keller Williams, so on. But Century 21 still, as of today, is at the top of the heap today, and they're the ones that people think of when they talk about um, when they talk about marketing their property. We're the most recognized name in real estate. And these numbers uh, would indicate that I think it's 19 years in a row right now, and we're constantly uh, go, you know, raising the bar and going up the ladder. Our commitment to quality service. This is in 2015. We were ranked the highest overall satisfaction for first time and repeat home buyers and sellers two years in a row by J.D. Power. Okay. So our business is actually, you know, our company is actually growing in leaps and bounds. You know, why does the brand matter to our customer today? Well, let me tell you something. How it works today is, um, you know, when people think real estate and you know what the numbers, they think Century 21, they're going to make the phone call to our offices or they're going to make the phone call to our agents because we have the brand awareness. That's going to get you 50% in the door today. The other 50% is going to come from your expertise and you winning, winning them over by building rapport and a good reputation with them. And between the two, you, you should be able to service them, whether you represent them as a buyer, buyer's agent, or you represent them in a seller, as a seller's agent. So it's the big boys that are out there right now. A while back, and um, you know, when I first started many years ago, it'll be 20 years actually, starting um, in July, you know, there was a lot of uh, small time companies that were out there today that, you know, they could, um, you know, um, you know, they could stand with the big boys. But if, as of today, with all the internet and, and, and uh, the overhead that's out there today, you see some of these uh, big companies, especially Century 21, rising to the top and, and a lot of the small time companies are not existing anymore. I really don't have the resources to keep up with uh, the Century 21s of the world. So what's in it for me? Okay, you know, why did you become an affiliated with the Century 21 system? I don't need to go around to all you guys. I know we got a, quite, quite a bit of people on the network today, but I'll, I'll share my, my feeling with you as I came to the company uh, almost 20 years ago. Um, I was a college graduate. I, um, you know, I, 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 was, I got involved in corporate America throughout my college career, I, I, you know, my, my college uh, education and everything. I, I went to corporate America, I always tried to move up the line in different, you know, different fields and always got knocked down, either got laid off or I couldn't really climb that ladder and make as much money as I wanted to make. So, you know, I eventually got my real estate license and, um, you know, the, the main reason why I came to Century 21 uh, was the training that we had here. Um, you know, I had 10 years sales experience before I got, got involved in real estate. I did, I sold insurance and investments and, and stuff like that. And, and uh, but, you know, even though I had the sales training, I never really owned a house before. I was 34 years old and, and uh, just starting out. And, uh, you know, when I came to Century 21, I might have had a little sales background in me, but um, I still needed someone to walk me along, you know, and show me the ropes of what, what house selling is all about. And um, I was fascinated with the training program back then, you know, come 20 years ago. We had what is called a, a, a shadow program. It's the same as what we, um, what we call it today. It's our mentor program. In our mentor program, I partnered up with someone who had 20 years experience and they, they held my hand for the first six months of my real estate career and, and showed me every single thing there was to know about real estate and actually helped me to, to become the person uh, that I am today. And God rest her soul, she had passed away a couple months ago, you know, um, at a young age. But, uh, you know, if it wasn't for her, you know, I wouldn't be where I am today. And that's where, you know, that's why you guys got to come in today. If you're just getting involved in, in, in Century 21 or just getting involved in real estate, you want to, you know, take advantage of these training classes that we have. You want to take advantage of um, being mentored with, uh, with, with people from your office, get in touch with your manager, but be like a sponge. You got to take that all in, you know, and, uh, and learn this business before you can actually go out and you can practice it. 
Just because you have a real estate license doesn't mean you're going to be good at real estate. There's other things that go along with it. You know, you got to learn how to deal with people. You got to know how to um, deal with contracts. You got to know the ins and outs behind houses. There's quite a bit of knowledge that you need to uh, um, need to learn when you get into a real estate office. It's not one of those. We're not a company that they throw you into the fire and they say, go, go get them, go sell and we'll make money from you. No, they, you know, you want to learn, you want to learn, you want to be like a sponge and you want to take it all in. And uh, you have the opportunity, everyone out there that's listening today and also in the, in the real estate offices to make a six figure uh, income and to, um, you know, to better your life. And so no one ever has to put the thumb on you at a corporate America job from nine to five and say, oh, you made too much money, you know? So Century 21, you know, gives you the opportunity. Um, we have all the tools, all the techniques of, uh, you know, I've looked at other companies out there. Um, we're, uh, we're making strides uh, that you wouldn't even believe with, um, with technology and with training uh, that would, uh, you know, that that's above and beyond what anybody else is doing out there. So that's why I was affiliated with it. But here's some of the tools uh, that are very important to, in your in your quest to become a real estate agent. This is one website that you'd want to be glued to and to learn. It's called 21 Online. Those of you who just joined the company, um, make sure you have all your passwords to 21 Online because there are there are a different bunch of um, areas that you can search within 21 online and, and learn and, and, and to, uh, you know, to build your foundation for real estate. You know, some of the things that I want to stress real important to you is, is you have, um, the first couple that, that, uh, the first one that's up here, Century 21 Business Builder. And then actually you can, you can take that down to the last one. It's called Zap. Those are our database programs that we have. Uh, Rob D'Amico will be teaching a Zap class tomorrow night at 5 p.m. You might want to tune into that. That's that's where you can store your clients, your 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 new and your past clients in there. All right, set them up on drip campaigns and different programs that you can constantly keep in touch with them. Business Builder is is um, was the um, was the only game in town up until before uh, you know before Zap came about where uh, Business Builder, you know, was also a CRM or a, a database that people would store their, their clients in. They have uh, beautiful flyers, marketing material, newsletters, all that good stuff. So, you know, you, wanted, you might want to take a look at both of them, but Zap is, is pretty much where the, the future of Century 21 is actually going. Um, our lead router system uh, is now uh, turned into a, a company called OpCity. Uh, which is uh, internet leads that come come our way. If you're not on the internet program where you're receiving leads, you want to reach out to our corporate office, either Rob or Jim D'Amico, and make sure that you're on our uh, company uh, lead generators that are going to all the agents. Um, and they can tell you a little bit about that. But that's uh, that's something where people inquire on the internet and they're being you know they're being passed along to the agents within the company. So you want to learn what that's all about and get trained on that. Century 21 University is, um, is a site that uh, teach, you know, has all different classes that you can learn you know, while, you're, while you're pursuing your real estate career. You'll have um, free classes. A lot of classes are uh, you know, maybe on Dot Loop or some software programs or how to work with buyers, how to work with sellers. Um, to certification classes where you pay a little bit of money online uh, through the Century 21 University and you will uh, maybe get rental certified or get a designation like a accredited business representative or a certified residential spe a specialist designation that you can add to your business card and to your portfolio. So all different classes um, all different times, uh, th there's no reason, uh, you know, that you can't be learning by going on this university and um, taking advantage of those. We have what is called quality service surveys, which is something that you would send out to your um, clients after you service them, either when they buy or when they sell, 
and it gives an indication of the, the type of person that you were as a real estate agent. They're going to grade you from a, from a grade of one to 10 and see how you, um, you know, and, and, and see what type of agent you are. Now, obviously a good quality service survey, you know, should be printed up by you and put in your portfolio for future, you know, for, for future recommendations. If anybody's looking to see um, how you did, you know, with your clients. So that's something that you can look into through 21 online. Century 21 business benefits, they're benefits for not only our clients, but also for us. We have a number of different things uh, that we can take advantage of as benefits by being a Century 21 employee, uh, from cell phone uh, discounts to um, office supply discounts. I mean, the, the list goes on and on you know, moving company discounts, boxes, so on. I mean, you could take advantage of as well as your clients can actually take advantage of some of the benefits of being a Century 21 employee. Uh, we have Century 21 Preferred Client Club on this network, uh, on, on 21 Online. And what it is is when you sell a property or someone buys a property from you, you can put them in a preferred client club where they would get um, seven different uh, pieces of literature from you that's branded to you within one year for a small fee. Uh, two years uh, being on this program would cost an agent $25 for the two years by putting one client on. And at that time, the client would get seven branded um, pieces of material from a calendar to a newsletter, to greetings, to, to uh, brochures that have your name and your phone number and everything on it. And it would only cost you, like I said, $25 for two years. If you wanted to expand it out, and some people go five and seven years, it would run anywhere from 40 to $70. Uh, I'm sorry, not 40. Um, yeah, maybe maybe 50 to, 50 to $70 if you wanted to put them on a longer program. Okay, but that's something you might want to look into. Agent financial tools are also on the network and also on 21 online. And what that is, is um, if you, you know, most people 2019 set goals for themselves and they want to know how to obtain their goals. And if you send it, putting a dollar amount on a, on a, on a goal, how do you achieve it? Um, you know, how much, how many calls you need to make? How many, um, how many letters you need to send out, how many sales you need to make. If you go on Agent Financial Tool um, through the tool library of 21 Online, it's actually going to show you how to break down your goals uh, to make it attainable for you to, to, uh, to accomplish. Um, Hispanic marketing, if those of you who speak more than one language, okay, especially the Spanish market, they have Spanish material that you can send out to your clients and customers out there. Um, the site has uh, plenty of, plenty of uh, literature on that. Um, we have what is called seller service pledge and buyer service pledge. Okay. What these are, they're pledges by Century 21 employees. We're the only company that actually does that. Where we, um, we tell sellers and buyers that, hey, if you're not happy with our service, you can get out of our our listing contracts are our buyer's contracts just by enforcing the pledge, you know, um, and, and what it does, it relinquishes them from any liabilities with us, you know, uh, of going with us, uh, you know, they don't ruin our reputation. We don't ruin their reputation. You know, we're the only companies that offer it when we, um, when we present our contracts to them. So you might want to look into that as well. Um, it, it's a, it's a great tool to use on your listing appointments in and also if you're trying to lock in someone as a buyer um, your brand studio and your PR studio is a different different uh, branded uh, colorful brochures that that get, that are printed up with the uh, you know uh, through through um, um, yeah, through through the century 21 uh, websites and everything I mean they they actually stuff that from from flyers to literature whatever, I mean, very colorful information, very professional, um, you know, that you can use for your sellers and buyers. Express Docs, 
okay, is something for um, if you want to get your just listed cards and your just sold cards, or you just want to market an area, Express Stocks will send out, um, you know, you can create different, different, um, different postcards, or if you wanted to create them online and have Express Stocks send them out, they'll charge you a fee to send them to the neighbors. And it's, you know, almost like a one-stop shopping type of thing. But they, they make all different um, documentation so they, and they can get them through the mail for you. The Golden Ruler, those of you who are not familiar with this, get familiar with it because um, it could save you a lot of headaches in the, in the future with your sellers. If, uh, you know, you have people sometimes that you list their property and they're wondering where we advertise and who's looking at their houses and everything. Well, the Golden Ruler actually tracks that for, tracks that for them. And, um, you know, what, what, it, what, what it basically means is, is that, you know, they, can, they know where the hits are coming from on their property. You know, they know that certain hits are coming from Trulia and Realtor.com and Boston.com. So they're going to get updates of everything, uh, uh, every person that, that's taking a look at their property. This way it takes a lot of pressure off you. Century 21 Mortgage um, is... Um, different brochures that can get that can get printed up um, right online and give the breakdown of how much a house would cost as far as a monthly payment, uh, what the down payment would, is going to be, and that would help a buyer um, decide, you know, if if the house is affordable for them. So, so many different tools that you see on Twenty One Online. You could stay on this guys for days, you know, and and this can help you. Um, you know, help, help you be, become a well-rounded uh, real estate agent. So what does that mean for you? Well, you know, guys, it, it means that, you know, more tools, you know, um, more learning, you know, you can learn, you know, just by having a computer at your own house if you wanted to. You know, you don't always have to be in the office, but what you want to be, especially this time of the year with the cold weather settling in, and everything you want to be like a sponge and get ready for that this spring market that's about to happen and get ready for 2019 so uh it means you know more sources you know uh, you know th there's no reason that you know you should go into an office or say listen the market's bad i don't know what to do i'm not making any money you know what you want to do is you just want to learn and go on these things and learn 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 and it's only going to make you become very, you know, going to make you better and better as a real estate agent out there. Um, here's a couple of skills to develop when you become a real estate agent. You know, um, it, it tells you to learn your business. Okay. Some of these things are important. Your market, well, most of them are important either. Your marketplace and your inventory. Guys, you got to know your inventory. If you're a real estate agent, right, you service the you know, Boston area or the North Shore area or the South Shore area, whatever. You want to know your inventory like the back of your hand. Every morning, one, one, of your, one of your things you should be doing as soon as you get up is going on the MLS and taking a look and see what's out there, see what kind of properties are there. And then partner those properties up with the people that you're servicing so that, you know, you, you can beat everybody else to the punch because everything's about timing. You know, everything's about timing in, in real estate. You want to you want to get the property before everybody else gets to it out there. So you want to know the marketplace, know your inventory, the mechanics of a transaction. This is very important. Now, what is the mechanics of a transaction? Well, you're going to have people come up to you and they're going to say, hey, Richie, you know, I'm thinking of buying. I don't know the first thing about buying a house. What does it involve? You want to know the mechanics. You want to know from start to finish what they have to do. And the same for people who are selling their house. They're going to ask you, how, what's your commission? What's a, you know, how does it work? You know, what do I have to do to get my house prepared to sell? All this stuff is the mechanics of a transaction. So you got to work on it. Those of you are brand new, two presentations you need to have out there. Number one, your presentation of working with buyers and knowing the process. And number two, have a listing presentation if someone wants to sell their house. Once you accomplish those two, you're on your way. Communications and sales skills. This is also a must in real estate. You got to communicate. Those of you who have been behind a desk, 
all right, and haven't talked to and haven't talking to anybody but a computer. You know, guess what? You got to come out of your comfort zone a little bit. You got to communicate. You got to use your sales skills. What does that mean? That means promote yourself and market yourself out there. All right. One of the things I always tell people is go out and get a name badge. Go out and, and get a badge uh, that says Century 21 Northeast. You know, you're a realtor. You know, put your, put your name on, on that. You know, wear it wherever you go. You're picking up your kids from school. You're going, um, going to the supermarket. You're, you're going anywhere. You know, um, you always want to wear your name badge because people will talk to you about real estate if you have something like that on. You know, um, you want to get the Century 21 apparel. You know, get some sweatshirts made up. Get some long sleeve shirts. You know, some has got the tank tops or whatever. You know, some people, you got to invest in your business a little bit. Some people get pens and, you know, paper and, and, and so on. I mean, I'm not saying, you know, spend all your money right now, but you've got to promote yourself because you've got to get your name out there. That's important. You've got to get business cards from the company. Well, guys, don't keep the business cards in a box. All right. You need to pass those out. Pass it to every person you run into contact with. I tell my new agents, right? Take five business cards, put them in your pocket. And before you go home every day, make sure you pass them out. Okay, you go to Dunkin' Donuts in the morning or Starbucks or whatever, you see the same girl or the guy in there, you give them a business card. Tell them you're in the real estate business. See if they need know anybody that, that needs any real estate help, you know? You, you, you go out for dinner with your family and you, you pay you pay by your credit card the bill at nighttime put a put a business card in that in that um, you know in in the um, in the bill that you get you know so that so the server will take that business card if, if they know anybody that's in the business you know to keep it keep you in mind I mean you want to pass them out every go to the supermarket put it on the bulletin board. Whatever you need to do to get your name out there, you have to do it in the early stage of real estate, guys. That is so, so important because let me tell you the law of numbers, and I can only give you Massachusetts numbers, and I promise you I'm going to work on New Hampshire and, and Maine and Rhode Island and all those other states, right? But in Massachusetts, there are 87,000 licensed real estate agents. It's unbelievable how many people have their real estate license. That's the bad part. The good part is there's only 27,000 that are actively practicing. So, you know, in the late 2000s, when people started, uh, you know, when the market started tanking a little bit, about a third of the real estate uh, agents checked out of the business and went back to work nine to five. That helped us a little bit. But still, those numbers are increasing as, as uh, more people are making more and more money uh, in real estate, right? So that 27000 is your competition, especially in Massachusetts. So what does that mean? For every person going after the same buyer out there, the same seller, there's four or five other people in line waiting for you to screw up. So that's why you have to get out there and you got to promote yourself and try to be the best there is in the business. Now, one of the biggest concerns that people have in the, in the uh, skill development is time management. Oh, Richie, I'm working 40 hours a week at my other job. I'm tired. I don't really want to do real estate. Well, if you don't want to do it, don't do it. But, you know, it, it, you, you have to balance your time. If you did get your license and everything, balance your time. Real estate doesn't have to be 20, 30, 40, 50 hours a week part time. So you're killing yourself and your family ends up hating you. Real estate, you can get real good at real estate by giving it 10 to 20 hours a week. I know people making $100,000 a year by, by, by just developing their time management and only working a short period of time and delegating work and everything. You can easily do that. But see, you don't want to be that type of person that drag, you're dragging yourself, kicking and screaming along the way, all right, trying to do real estate when you, your mind isn't there. All right, so make the effort to put some time aside. It doesn't have to be every day, but you know, when you do decide to do real estate, make sure you have a routine that you need to follow, all right? And follow that routine. And guys, give yourself enough time. Real estate takes anywhere from six months to a year to get going. Some people who are part-time might take a year to two years to get going. 
don't quit after a month or two months and say, this isn't going to work. Hey, you fought so hard to get your license, right? Give it time. But may, when you're giving it time, make sure you're putting two feet in at, the, at once, not one foot, at, one foot in and trying the business and then sticking the other foot in there. That's not going to work. You need to go at it. You need to set a goal for yourself. 2019, we're only about 15 days in. What are you going to do? What do you want to accomplish for the, for the next 11 and a half months? You can't have the same goals as your friends. You got to have the same goal for you. Same goal for your fam. you know, a goal for your family. Could be materialistic, could be a trip, could be a vacation, uh, could be uh, buying a new car, could be college education for your children, whatever. You put that together with your family and then you work to try to achieve it. Set the bar. If you set a goal, it's going to force you to do something. Business planning, put that plan together. Show it to your manager. Show it to your mentor. Show it to your wife. Show it to who, uh, spouse. Have them help you follow that business plan. And guys, probably the, probably the most important trait to develop is your technology. Do you know that a lot of people today, the veteran agents are checking out because of technology today? A lot of them don't know how to use an iPhone. A lot of them don't know how to use a dot loop electronic signature system. A lot of people uh, are having problems with scanning things. You know, uh, so they check out. You can't. You have to keep up with the trends. Guys, when I started in 1999, there were things that you probably never even heard of like a pager, like a beeper, like a, a, a phone booth, like a flip phone, like a bag phone. See, now you know things. If you're familiar with technology, you've heard of iPhones. You've heard of texting and emailing and iPads and Mac computers. Started, it was, you know, my beeper would go off. All right, and then I would pull over to the payphone, put a couple uh, uh, couple dimes in that payphone, and call someone. It's so much advanced today, but if you don't keep up with your communications, you will die in real estate. See, emails are a, a big today, right? But they're going away. The next few years, you won't even see emails anymore. You know why? They're going to be replaced. You know what they're going to be replaced by? Text messaging. Text messaging is an instant way that you can communicate with someone without even calling them. But if you don't keep up with that, the changing trends that go on in technology, you're not going to make it. So that's one of the things. And, and it, it, you know, it's so important to communicate in a timely fashion with people because the world is, you know, especially – in Massachusetts, right, it's, it, it, it's so fast-paced that if you don't get back to someone, they're going to call someone else. Now, you have business traits to develop, to develop all right? You got to help, help other people. Guess what? We're in the business of helping people, finding housing. You're going to have a dedication to exceptional service, okay? Not good service, but exceptional service. Why do you want exceptional service? Well, so because this business is on referrals. Now, if you want to be a one-hit wonder, go right ahead. If you want to give just adequate service, go ahead. But if you want to be a lifelong person in real estate, you want to give exceptional service. Go above and beyond what you're supposed to do. You got to be self-disciplined, which means you have to have a good worth ethic. You got to get organized. That's a key in real estate. You have a strong desire and determination to succeed. You know what, guys? If you want to do real estate, get away from the dull and disillusioned people that are out there. They're all, they're all around us. Stop watching the news for 18 minutes at 11 o'clock because it's, it's all about who killed who, the government shutting down, Trump this, do that, whatever it is. It's all nonsense. It doesn't, you know, it, it, it shouldn't affect you. Your job, you have a purpose in real estate. So go out, help people buy and sell the American dream. 
Get away from the people that are miserable. That's what they tell me in my sales training when I first said, get, a, get rid of those people that don't have a good outlook on life. They will drag you down. You got to have a healthy self-image. What does that mean? Well, it means you got to feel confident in what you're doing. You know, just because you know real estate doesn't mean you can go out and practice it. You got to feel good about it. You got to feel like you're the best in the business. And if you, you don't feel confident enough, start, you know what I, I did at the early stages of my real estate career? I read, I read books. I read books on self-esteem. I wanted to get my self-esteem up so I can go out there and talk to people because this is a business of talking to people face to face. You got to get good at that, but you got to believe in yourself. You got to believe in your product. You got to believe in your service. You got to control your attitude. In the worst of times, you got to be upbeat. That people can see right through you. They, people don't want to buy a house through you or list a house through you if you're negative, dull, and disillusioned. If you've got a bad attitude about things. Even in the worst times, you got to have a good attitude. Because it, 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 you know, other people feed off of that as well. You got to keep learning and growing. I love to read now. I'm 54 years old. You know, um, I, I, I've been reading more books than I've ever done, even when I was in college. You know, but I love reading books on, uh, on self-improvement. Uh, success stories, I'm, I'm big at that. I love reading that stuff. It keeps my mind fresh and it keeps me going in one direction. You know, and then the willingness to step outside of your comfort zone. Guys, if you never stepped out of your comfort zone, well, you have to. Do things you don't want to do. Do things that other realtors don't want to do and try to try to find your niche. Oh, uh, Richie, I don't want, you know, I don't like talking to people. Well, you're in the wrong business then. You got to talk to people. Get outside your comfort zone. I don't like to make a phone call. Get to make a phone call. Make that phone call. Do the things you don't want to do. These are all going to be traits that are going to help you. Because what it's going to do is generate your business. You have to search for buyers and sellers because they're your prospects. They're your prospects out there. That's what's going to make you succeed. Now, your business generation, this is what they tell you. It's set up in a circle. 50% is, it, it means 50% of your time you need to generate business. You're going to have a 30% support group out there, which is your Century 21 teammates. They will support you no matter what you do. Okay? At least they should. And then professional development. Always want to better yourself. Get better and better and better. I'm not good at this, so my presentations ain't good. Keep practicing. Practicing makes perfect. You know that. Ways of reaching prospects. There's only five ways of reaching someone. Face-to-face, -face, the phone, the mail, the email, the social networking. What are your advantages and challenges of each? What are they? Well, I like, personally, I love face-to-face. -face. You know, I'll make a phone call. As, as my circle goes like this. Make the phone call and set the appointment. I go from phone to face-to-face. -face. Okay? Some people hate face-to-face hate -face and hate the phone, so what they do, they send the mail out or they email. Guys, you will beat out 90% of the industry if you master the phone system. Get good on the phone. People don't like the phone. They feel, oh, I'm going to send them an email out. They'll call me. Well, guess what? They're never going to call. You've got to build a relationship over the phone to do that face-to-face. -face. Social networking is big as well. That's how you advertise today. You're saving money on printed advertising by doing all your social networking advertising. Okay? Ways of reaching prospects. You got to find out different considerations. Who are you going to be contacting? 
What's you going to be objective to the message that you're going to leave? Is the prospect accessible through the method of contact? Are you available during the hours necessary? Your own communication strengths, efficiencies of cost and time, the results you will produce. These are all the things you've got to consider. Here's the, here's the, the drawback. Oh, Richie, the do not call came, came about in 2011 and it affected me from using the phone. That's an excuse. You can't have an excuse. Yeah, when it came out in 2011, everybody was so happy. They all wanted to sue us. We were making calls without calling the directory. Guess what's happening today, seven years, eight years later? It's just about almost going away. You know, pick up the phone. You can check the directory, the mass.gov directory, and see if they're on the do not call. But the only way you're going to get in trouble is if you harass someone on the phone, and I know you're not going to do that. You go about it in a nice way, making a phone call. If they say, hey, listen, I'm on the do not call, you know what you say? You say, I apologize. It won't happen again. Do you mind if I just send you some literature in the mail? And that's how you end the conversation. Don't get caught up with this. Do the things you need to do to make it work. Business development, active versus passive prospecting. You could be an active prospector. What does that mean? Your sales associate init uh, initiated. Your proactive calling, visiting, initiating conversation with people, offering your service and asking for business and referrals. You're proactive. Go after it. If you're going to be passive, what you're doing is you're still promoting yourself, but you're waiting for the phone to ring. That call's got to be null and void. It's not going to happen. Get active. Get aggressive when it comes to doing your business. Now, it says benefits of active prospecting. Your success, your success is not market-driven. You're in control of how many or how few you will contact. High levels of production and income, sure. More people you contact, a lot of numbers, you know. You call 100 people, you know, you're, you're bound to get someone to pick up the phone or maybe an appointment here and there, you know, as opposed to calling a, a few of them, you know. But, it does, you know, the higher you, the higher you go, the better, you know, the, the more calls you make and the more things you send out, the better off you are. Now, what you're going to be searching for out there is you're looking for buyers and sellers. What you got to do is balance your time or balance these out. When I first started way back, you know what they said? Richie, go after the sellers. This was way back. I said, why? He said, you'll have more control of your life. I said, really? I said, but I don't know that many sellers. Just go after them. So what I did is I said, okay, well, I'll try. I tried, but I picked up a lot of buyers along the way. And you know what the buyers did? They twisted me upside down. All right? If the buyers didn't go out at, at their convenience, then they dumped me and went to someone else. I found out that sellers, you have more control of your life. All right? If you're working with a seller, you can you can pick up more buy you you can pick up more inventory. You can pick uh, pick up more buyers by doing an open house. You can do the open house at your convenience or whatever. You know you can dictate the terms. And you know what? Another valuable thing I've learned from working on the on the listing side is that listing agents make more money. Okay, look in the offices where you're at right now. Look at the people that are making money. They're all listing agents. There's no buyer agent that's a, that, that makes more money than a listing agent. I don't care what office you go to. Doesn't happen. But what are you going to do? You got to balance off. If you got one listing, you can do an open house and pick up a couple buyers. Now, now that, that beam is balanced. Okay? And guys, if you're part-time, you should be able to juggle Three listings and three buyers at the same time, part-time. There's no way you can't do that. Oh, I work a full-time job. You're going to be able to do it. You can service them. Things happen at nighttime now. Things happen on weekends. Remember, as it gets darker, you know, people don't want to see houses. Uh, 
you know, at, at nighttime. They'd rather see him on the weekends right now. You know, as the spring comes, it'll be a little bit different story. But, you know, uh, you could service three and three. And then as you become top producers in the company, you do five and five, 10 and 10. You'll be able to manage that. You can do it. What's the benefits of working with the seller? You got control of your time, like I said, higher income potential. You got visibility. You listings attract the buyers. Of course they do. And greater business stability during changing times. What are your challenges? Buyers sometimes are stubborn. Sometimes they get demanding. All right? Sometimes they want you to do an open house Saturday and Sunday. They don't care if the Patriots are on Sunday. They still want you to do the open house. All right? See, it, sometimes they get like that. But they only get like that is if you overprice things. You shouldn't have any problem selling inventory today if you price things right and you market it correctly. Now, if you're working with the buyers, well, you can make income sooner. Of course, by buyers, if they're willing to pull the trigger right away, it's emotionally rewarding and better prospects for repeat customers. Challenges in working with buyers, they usually work with a million other buyer agents, unless you got them into a contract. You got to win them over. But buyers want to go out at their convenience. If you work nine to five and they want to see, thing at 10, see things at 10, 11 o'clock in the morning, you can't make it and say, hey, listen. You know, I could show it to you at six. You know, they got to eventually know that you're, that, 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 you know, you're not working to their best interest. They'll drop you and go with someone else who's full time. How do you find real success? Well, people have core values, which are the most important things that, that engage our hearts and minds and help define our true values. Remember I was telling you before, you can have a goal of money. Uh, a trip, a boat, going away, doing things with the family. It all depends on how you're going to look at it. Here's your path towards success. You got core values, then it's a vision for your success, and you're going to create specific goals. So what's a goal you want to do? What is a goal, first of all? Something you're committed to achieve, which requires an effort you're willing to expend. What are the, what are the benefits of goal setting? Well, guys, you got something to shoot for, don't you? If you don't shoot for anything, if you say, yeah, I want to make $100,000 in 2019, Richie, that, that's fine. I'm going to be clapping my hands, but you need, to, you need a plan to get there. You know? You need something. And, and in order to get there, what, is the, what does the goal have to be? Well, guys, it's got to be in writing. Got to be in writing. You got to look at it every day and see how you're doing. Specific and measurable. It has to be your goal. Do not compare what other people are doing out there. I hate sometimes I got a couple new agents and they, they look at one another and, you know, they, they, sometimes they get jealous. One's doing better than the other one. Um, you, listen, set your goals, whatever it's attainable for you. All right, but it has to be your goal. It has to be believable. And it has to be, more importantly, realistic and achievable. You got to back them up with real plans. It's got to balance with other business and life goals. You should have short-term, mid-term, and long-term uh, goals. And guys, use photos and symbols as visual anchors. Uh, those of you who heard my story many times, you know, I... Um, I um, Come uh, 10 years ago, I became a single dad. Uh, my ex-wife had passed away in a, in a car accident, and my, my kids were 9, 13, and 15 when they lost their mother. So my girlfriend, uh, who I've been with uh, for a while, helped me raise them. But they always was, was resentful on uh, me being in real estate because it took a lot of time away from them, especially when, they, when you, you lose a parent. So I remember one... Uh, one New Year's Eve, we sat down, and me and my girlfriend decided that we create a um, a family goal for them, and it's probably the best thing I ever did. We sat down on on uh, Christmas Eve, I'm sorry, New Year's Eve, and we put together a family goal that I was going to take them to Disney World for the first time since they were really little, and have them all take a friend. 
Okay, now my daughter was nine. She's a uh, uh, nine-year-old, My eye, her eyes lit up. She was going to take a friend. My two boys were 13 and 15. They were going to take friends. I said, I'm going to pay for everybody. I said, you guys are going to help me achieve my goals this year to get there. I need X amount of dollars to get there. Let me tell you, because I got my family involved, even though my daughter pecked at me every single day, and oh, daddy, we got to make it. We got to make it. We got to make it. I got to tell my friend that if we're not going to go, let me know. She was a person that pecked at me, but she made me get up every morning all right, and, and, and try to focus on my goal. And what we did is we, that night on New Year's Eve, we, we printed up pictures on the, uh, on a, a, a photocopier and everything of uh, pictures of the castle and pictures of Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse. And um, we had, we hung these things all around the house. All right. And uh, every, it, it reminded me every morning when I looked at these pictures, whether it was on the mirror or on my, my bedroom, uh, wall or whatever uh, in the kitchen on the fridge whatever it reminded me what i had to do to hit my family goal and you know i I did it and that was probably the best time we've ever had you know as a family since they they lost their mom and we've been making goals every single year and we do the same thing every new year's eve is we do a family goal and a family family trip so whatever we need to do for that year but those things, guys, are very important, all right? That's what you actually, that's what you want to do, is use symbols and anchors and all that stuff, but create something for yourself. Um, here's just a situation, you know, short-term goals, days or weeks, months, long-term, so on as years, all right? But you got to have a balanced life, you know? Some people should have all this stuff. Most people should have all this in their life, business, family, health and wellness, spiritual, community, financial, personal growth. Put it any place you want in here, but that's what it's called, a balanced life. And when you're setting goals, make sure you got the plans, you have daily activities, you monitor the results, tune and modify as needed, and that's the way for you to achieve your goals. Like I was mentioning before, your agent financial tools, all right, is your, it's in your tool library. You go to Agent Financial Tools, and you'll put certain things together. It's like graphs. AFT is your Agent Financial Tools to break down your income goals into monthly listing sides and prospecting contacts. And that's that. Any of you guys got any questions concerning, um, concerning anything? How was it? Anybody? Okay. Well, what I uh, what I'm going to tell you right now is we'll take right now at six o'clock. We're going to take a five minute uh, break. Media. All right, I got to come back at five past six, and I'll put the, uh, the last off, which is the power of info. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll go through that, okay? So I'll see you all in five minutes.